Welcome. So how nice were they to actually give us our complex, our, our imaginary narrower and its complex conjugate. Thank you very much, problem. Uh, but what's very important is you know, whenever we have this, um, the square root of a number, we always have to make sure we include the positive and the negative, right? This exact same thing when we have our imaginary, our complex number. When we have a negative i or a positive i, we have to make sure we include the complex conjugate. And why again? Well, because remember, i equals the square root of negative 1. So if we're going to be squaring, whenever we're taking the square root, remember when we introduce the square root, we have to include both the positive and the negative value of this. So when we're given the zeros, we have to make sure whenever we have an i, and if we don't present both of them, we have to make sure we have the positive and the negative. And that also works for if we have the square root of a, um, the square root of a number as well. So in this case, I have two, negative i and i, and I need to write the polynomial. So I'm going to list my zeros as x equals 2, x equals negative i, and x equals i. Now I need to write them as factors. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set these all equal to 0. So therefore, I have x minus 2 equals 0, x plus i equals 0, and x minus i equals 0. OK, so now I set them all equal to 0, but I still don't have anything close to a polynomial. But remember, I can, from setting them all equal to 0, I'm working the 0 product property backwards. So now I can set these as, as all of a product equal to 0. All right, this is just the 0 product property working backwards. Now I need to multiply these out. So now I have a polynomial written as a product of its linear factors. Now I just need to multiply this all out. So there's a couple methods we could do, with, um, do here. I always like to multiply this out, and I usually would just use FOIL. But I'll make sure that I multiply it out, just so you guys can see that when you multiply a complex number by its conjugate, the middle terms cancel out. x times x is x squared. x times i is xi. x times i is negative xi. And negative i, negative i times i is going to be a negative i squared. And we'll talk about that in a second. But anyways, the main important thing I want you guys to understand is negative xi and xi, those cancel out. They add to 0. So I'm left with x squared minus i squared, right? But remember, if i equals negative 1, then i squared, e I'm sorry, if i equals the square root of negative 1, then i squared equals negative 1. So this is really x squared minus a negative 1, which is x squared plus 1. So now I have x minus 2 times x squared plus 1. Now, oh, I'm sorry, equals 0. All right. Now I just need to multiply these out. And you can go ahead and do, again, the box method if you like. Or if you're comfortable with just applying FOIL, you can do that as well. So x times x squared is going to be x cubed. x times x is going to be plus x. Negative 2 times 2x is going to be a negative 2x squared. Negative 2 times 1 is minus 2 equals 0. Now I'll just make sure I write these in descending order of my exponents. And then also, I don't want to write my polynomial equal to 0 because we only did that to find the zeros. I want to write it as with this name of the function. So I'll write f of x equals x cubed minus 2x squared plus x minus 2. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you write a polynomial given some zeros, including imaginary. Thanks.